All right, we're going to start this semester. Here's video number one. Um, video number one here, we're going to look at the first chapter. The first chapter is mostly review of Gen Chem 1. And so we're going to go through it very quickly. I'm just going to go through most of it uh, going through your book. Uh, I would strongly recommend boning up on this information in chapter one here. Uh, then moving on to chapter three, you'll find in the video uh, list that we do chapter one. Then we're going to go to chapter three, functional groups, because that's going to be very new material for you and stuff that's going to take a lot of memorization. So I recommend after chapter one, go to chapter three and then go back to chapter two. Chapter two is acids and bases and over half of which is also review of Gen Chem, this time Gen Chem 2. So let's start out. Uh, we're looking at organic chemistry. This is going to be a little shakier video because I got to be going page, turning pages and moving the camera and stuff like that. So chapter one, structure and bonding. And as I said, we're going to go through this rather quickly. All right. And Truth, we're going to skip a lot. Periodic table, I think you know that there's the periodic table and what that's all about. Atoms, uh, protons, neutrons, electrons, cations, and anions, all that good stuff. Uh, the size of the elements, uh, the periodic table, symbols, and all that type of good stuff. Atomic weight. All that good stuff. What orbitals look like? Uh, S orbitals, P orbitals. You should be very aware of that type of thing. Uh, yes, the 2S, 2PX, 2PY, 2PZ orbitals. Put them all together and you have this type of shape of the PX, PY, and PZ there. Let's see, moving on, bonding. Well, we spent a whole lot of time bonding in Gen Chem 1. You've got ionic bonding and covalent bonding. And we all know ionic compounds versus covalent compounds. No problem there. And this is, well, we'll just more of that type of stuff. Uh, a few things to note. Here's a nice table here in your tro book, uh, or excuse me, in your book here. Uh, figure 1.2. Um, the normal number of bonds that elements have. Uh, note that hydrogen usually has one bond and no lone pairs. Carbon normally has four bonds and no lone pairs on it. Nitrogen usually has three bonds and one lone pair. Oxygen, two bonds, two lone pairs. Uh, halogens, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, with uh, one bond and three lone pairs. Uh, You've probably seen these before, but get to know those patterns because if this is a normal carbon, that's a normal nitrogen, normal oxygen. When you see something different than that, that's when you know you have to pay a little more attention to it. All right, Lewis structures. Hopefully you know how to do Lewis structures. Lewis structure is very, very important for organic chemistry. Uh, the book has your whole thing, how to draw Lewis structures. Of the old-fashioned way here. Oh, there's multiple bonds. Remember that you have a case if you have a carbon next to another carbon here and there's a lone pair on that carbon, but this one doesn't have its octet, you're going to make another bond. So you have double bonds, triple bonds, and the like. All right, so make sure you know all about uh, all of that, double bonds, carbon-carbon double bonds, triple bonds. Um, formal charge. Some folks, when they take Gen Chem 1, their instructors do not talk about formal charge that much. Uh, we really, in organic chemistry, like to keep track of the formal charge because it helps us decide how reactions are going to happen. If you know formal charge and you know polarity, those two things combined will really uh, give you a good handle on how organic molecules are going to react. So remember the rules of how to do uh, formal charge. It's the number of lone pairs plus half the number of bonded, or half the number of bonding pairs. One electron from each bond for formal charge. All right, so make sure you can go through all of that. All right, uh, here's another nice table to know. 
Um, so we've, saw, we've seen this middle column here. This is normal carbon, nitrogens, and oxygens, what they look like. Remember, said nitrogen normally has three bonds and one lone pair here. What if it doesn't have that? This is a good idea just to have memorized. If you see a carbon with just three bonds and no lone pairs, that's a plus one charge. A nitrogen with four bonds is a plus one charge. An oxygen with three bonds and one lone pair is a plus one charge. Note, an oxygen with one bond and three lone pairs is a negative charge. Nitrogen with two bonds, two lone pairs is negative. Carbon with three bonds and one lone pair is a negative charge. Uh, get to s recognize this. So you don't really have to spend a lot of time trying to find formal charge. If you say, okay, let me look at Here's an oxygen with uh, one bond and three lone pairs. Oh, I know that that has a negative formal charge. Okay, uh, formal charge of negative one for that beast. It's just good to kind of get that down, have that known so you don't have to waste a whole lot of time figuring out formal charge. All right, uh, a new thing that will be play a lot of importance in organic chemistry is isomers. And I don't know if you've studied isomers or had that too much. Isomers is when you can draw the Lewis structure for a molecule, but there are other ways to draw it. For example, let's look at this molecule, ethanol, and this molecule, dimethyl ether. Completely different molecules here uh, with different properties. Ether is... Uh, Dimethyl ether, very low boiling point, very bad for you. Ethanol, not that great for you, but that's the alcohol you find in beer and tequila and all the finer things. All right. Note, if we count the number of carbons, oxygens, and hydrogens, note they both have two carbons, six hydrogens, and one oxygen. Both of these molecules are C2H6O, but they are completely different molecules with completely different properties. This is why in organic chemistry, I rarely ever accept as an answer a formula like C2H6O. It just does not give anyone enough information uh, to say what the molecule is. So in Gen Chem 1 and 2, we commonly wrote our molecules like this in just this type of formula. We are not going to do that with organic chemistry, just not enough information here. But anytime you have the same formula, but they are different molecules, they are isomers of each other. Ethanol is an isomer of dimethyl ether. Dimethyl ether is an isomer of ethanol. All right. And because they are different in how they are connected, these, these types of isomers are called constitutional isomers. Same molecular formula, but different connectivity of their atoms. All right. Those are constitutional isomers. All right, okay, back to Gen Chem 1, exceptions to the octet rule. We're pretty fine with that. Resonance forms. Let's spend a, just a little bit more time on resonance because resonance is very important with organic chemistry. Hopefully you love resonance forms. All right, note if we look at this molecule here, we've got the nitrogen with two lone pairs and is negatively charged. We can take two of the, or one of the lone pairs here, make a bond between the carbon and the nitrogen, break one of these double bonds, break the double bond here to make it a single bond and that puts the negative charge on that oxygen. These are two resonance structures. And very important whenever you're dealing with resonance structures, you put that double-headed arrow right there. All right. Recall with resonance forms, you cannot move atoms. You have to have the same placement of atoms. You cannot move the atoms around. Another way of saying it is you cannot move sigma bonds, the single bond part of the bond. You can only move around lone pairs, and pi bonding electrons. And very important about resonance forms, those electrons that you're moving around means that those electrons are delocalized. They're not held in any one specific spot. In our example before, 
they were either on those two electrons were either lone pair on the nitrogen or they were a uh, nitrogen carbon bonding pi bonding pair but they are delocalized and what that does is make tells us that the molecule is more stable than you would think it would be all right so that's very important whenever you notice resonance in a molecule whenever you can see oh um, this molecule has resonance formed that tells us that molecule is more stable than you think it would be also note with resonance when you have these two resonance forms here the actual molecule is really a combination of these two this thing right here with a lone pair with extra lone pair on the nitrogen doesn't really exist this doesn't really exist either with the double bond here and a single bond up here the real molecules the resonance hybrid it is a combination of those two this isn't the exact right structure this is not the exact right structure the exact right structure is a combination of those two very very important it is not, absolutely not, these two forms going back and forth. It is not that sometimes the double bond is between the carbon and the nitrogen and other times it's between the carbon and the oxygen. Oxygen, that is not the case. 100% of the time, the real molecule is a combination of the two resonance forms. It is not a switching back and forth of the various resonance forms. All right, so your book goes into resonance theory. Definitely read up on this. A lot of it should be uh, background information. It should be stuff you remembered from Gen Chem 1, but definitely go through that drawing resonance structures and how they're formed, moving electrons around. It'll be very important in organic chemistry to be able to do that. Uh, note your book spends many pages on resonance, so definitely do that and getting to the resonance hybrid the fact that the real thing is a combination when we go back to this molecule up here note we said this was one resonance form this is the other resonance form the real beast looks something like that this doesn't exist this doesn't exist a hundred percent of the time this is what we have so make sure you know that and know how to do that all right, then we go down to determining molecular shape, our good old friend VSEPR theory. That's always fun. All right, bond length. Okay, uh, the main thing to remember about bond length is the length between sing or the single versus double versus triple bonds. Recall that a carbon-carbon single bond is longer than a carbon-carbon double bond double bond is shorter, a carbon-carbon triple bond is even shorter than the double bond. Bond angles, we get that with VSEPR theory. Note linear molecules, 180 degrees, trigonal planar geometry, which we find quite a bit in organic chemistry, 120 degrees, tetrahedral geometry, 109.5 degrees. Those are the main angles that we're gonna find with our organic molecules. So make sure you know how to do VSEPR theory. Get, do the Lewis structure. Get the shape. Shape is going to be very important with organic chemistry. All right. Uh, I'm going to end the video here because we now need to look at how to draw organic molecules. And this is, even though it's chapter one, this is some probably going to be some new stuff for you. So we need to spend a little bit of time on drawing organic molecules.